Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we want to talk about the western blotting technique. So if you want to know what is western blot, why western blot is used, what are the steps of western blotting, means the western blotting protocol, then this video is just for you and watch this video to the end. Okay. So the very first thing that I want to talk about of western blotting is that you need to have a basic and generic understanding of blotting techniques. What is a blotting? Blotting is a technique which relies on the two different biological techniques. One is the electrophoresis and the second one is the transfer or probe based binding method to detect specimen from a mixture of sample. Now in this case of western blotting, the specimen that we want to detect is proteins. For southern blotting, the specimen that we want to detect is DNA. For northern blotting, the specimen that we want to detect is RNA. So in western blotting, we are detecting protein, a target protein from a mixture of other proteins. And if the target protein present in the mixture of protein in very low concentration, even in the nanogram level, still the western blotting is good enough to detect the presence of the target protein. Okay? So, Western blotting is also termed as immunoblotting technique. Immunoblotting, why? Because western blotting requires the probing or targeting of target protein utilizing antibodies, primary antibodies, sometimes primary as well as secondary antibodies. So, let us talk about the, the process of western blotting. As I said, this is the technique of detecting the target protein from a mixture of uh, proteins together. So, what we need to do, we always need to know uh, the type of protein we are trying to find out, right? So we know what kind of protein we are trying to find out, the target protein we know about that. And we also build antibody that can specifically bind against that target protein of ours. So these two things are uh, very important and they are constant. One is the target, target protein, this is important. And the second important thing here is the antibody, antibody which is tagged with the antibody, excuse me, so the antibody which is tagged with an enzyme that can convert, convert a substrate into a product and the product should be a colored product or the product can be light. So both color and light intensity can be visualized, can be calculated. So not only this technique will be qualitative, but it can be quantitative as well. Okay. So, this set is the key principle, we are trying to find out the target protein use utilizing antibody. But how exactly we will find out that? Let us say uh, you get a cell and you make the cell lysate and from the cell lysate you get tons of different proteins out there. You want to particularly fish out your target protein, how will you do that? So, for that purpose what we need to do, what we need to use here is that obviously a resolution method that will separate protein based on their molecular weight, very first thing, it is re really required in the very first place. So we also want to rely on the technique known as SDS page polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, sodium dodicyl sulphate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So use SDS page that will separate proteins, that separates protein from uh, each other using uh, in the polyacrylamide gel. And why we use SDS here? Because SDS actually denatures, denatures the protein coming from the cell cytosol and not only the denature but also negatively charge them, negatively charge all the proteins. So ultimately at the end we have all denatured negatively charged proteins, this is what we have and we can separate this protein utilizing SDS page technique and let us say after this process this is the page and in this SDS page we will be separating this is where the ladder sequence is concerned, the reference and this is uh, the band pattern that we find out in uh, our target well. So this is this is the band pattern that we found out in the SDS page, this is the very first step here, Okay, very first step is the lysate treating with SDS and the second step is the running the polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So electrophoresis process is done, after that comes the ultimate idea of blotting and whenever we use this term blotting that means transferring, transferring of material from one place to the other in a paper that is called the blotting. So here we will transfer this whole information of different proteins from this polyacrylamide gel into a paper, okay, a paper.
So the name of the paper is PVDF. I'm not going to talk about the full form here. You can easily search it down. PVDF membrane. PVDF membrane is used as a paper, and in the P PVDF membrane we get an imprint of it. So in this PVDF membrane we also find out uh, this. You know, as per this rule, uh, the same the same bands will be present. How exactly we transfer the component from uh, polyacrylamide gel into PVDF membrane? This is the blotting step, the particular blotting step. Okay, so in this blotting step, uh, let me draw this whole idea of blotting. And this idea of blotting, something like this. Okay, we have the transfer buffer in the bottom, and after the transfer buffer, we have a sponge. Let me draw it with different color. Sponge with green color. This is a sponge. Okay, and uh, then we have what we have after sponge. We have a simple. This is a membrane. What membrane? Filter paper. Filter paper, and then what we have? We put the agarose. I mean, in this case, not agarose, uh, but SDS gel, PGF, polyacrylamide gel. Okay, polyacrylamide gel. And then what we have? We have the PVDF membrane on top. So this is the PVDF, PVDF membrane. And then on top of which we will have another. What we will have? Another filter paper, filter paper. This is also filter paper, and then finally, on top of which we'll have sponge. Okay, we'll have sponge. Same thing, this one. Okay, and then we put electrodes. Okay, and this electro, this is buffer, buffer solution, and these electrodes are placed in a way that this is the positive side, this is the negative side of the electrode. So this is, so positive means anode, and this is cathode. Okay, let me tell you very clearly. Many students make the mistake of cathode and anode. Cathode means negative, anode means positive. Cation means positive and ions means negative. Do not confuse. Okay, so here it is. We place why we place anode uh, there because we want the buffer to run. We want the buffer to run from the bottom to the top, and the protein must move on that direction. But we know the proteins all are negatively charged. As the proteins are negatively charged, the proteins must migrate towards the positive end. That means proteins will migrate towards the anode. That's why we put anode here and cathode in the bottom. And generally, we can do that in like this. Horizontally, or we can do that vertically. Either way, it will work. And this separation or blotting separation technique used here is electrophoretic mobility. Okay, we use electrical field so that the target proteins can migrate from the ne negative charge region to the positive charge region. But in case of southern and northern blotting, the process of blotting or transfer is capillary effect based. Not the electric field based. Okay, remember the difference. So once it gets transferred, so the sole idea here is to transfer and make a replica of the polyacrylamide gel into the PVDF membrane. Now another question: Why we use PVDF membrane? Because we use nitrocellulose membrane. We used to use nitrocellulose membrane in earlier southern blotting, uh, northern blotting techniques. Now we use nylon membrane for the southern and northern blotting. So why do you use? Why do we use PVDF membrane in case of this uh, western blotting technique and not the other? The reason behind it is that it was found out that the PVDF membrane, remember, the PVDF membrane can bind to more protein much more effectively. Okay, because normally, if you look at the binding capability of a nylon or nitrocellulose membrane and a PVDF membrane, a nitrocellulose membrane can bind with protein near about less than hundred. Microgram of protein per square centimeter. Normally, range from 80 to 100 microgram per square centimeter of the paper. That's the binding capability for a nitrocellulose membrane with a protein. But a PVDF membrane can bind with more protein in less surface area. That is 150 to 200 microgram of protein per square centimeter of area. So more, in fact, kind of double uh, binding capability. But Due to this higher affinity of protein binding capability of PVDF membrane, there is also a chance of 
uh, what I can say background noise. What is background noise? Because this PBDF can bind with proteins and every single many different places are there to bind with protein. So, some accessory proteins may also associated with PBDF membrane and if we do not, if we are not capable of separating them out, if we do not what we call as a block uh, the unwanted binding, then a PVDF membrane will give us a lots of noisy picture which will be very difficult for us to see the target region of the protein very clearly. That is one drawback of the PVDF, but still we use PVDF because it has a higher affinity of binding towards uh, proteins. Okay? And not only that, but, but also we can strip the proteins out of PVDF, we can reattach them, we can probe them, we can block them, we can do all this kind of stuffs. Uh, multiple times using PVDF membrane. Okay? That is the importance of PVDF membrane that is why use PVDF membrane. So, now we have this PVDF membrane, we have the transfer, the transfer is made, everything is done and after everything is done, what we need to do simply is, we simply want to visualize the target protein of our choice. So, if you want to visualize the target protein of our choice, uh, then obviously we need to use the, the probe. In this case, the probe is the antibody that we produced. So, block, uh, the, the transfer is done. So, let me write down the important step. The step number one, remember, is SDS treatment plus polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. After that is done, then electrophoretic mobility that is that is a transfer, transfer we can say, a transfer or blotting uh, technique. And after the blotting is done, then what we will do is the very first step is blocking. Blocking means, you know, we uh, do not want any unwanted noise from the background. So, we know that these are the portions where proteins are present, uh, where the bands are present, right. So, apart from the rest of the nitrocellulose membrane, is, uh, sorry, rest of the PVDF membrane is free and is, as I said, the PVDF is very much uh, eager to bind with protein. So, if we add some other protein, the PVDF, the other locations of the PVDF will bind with them and that is known as a blocking step because we want to block, because once we add this antibody, this antibody is on another protein obviously, so antibody can bind in any place apart from the target region as well. And if that happens, a lots of background noise can be there. Although the antibody is specific and targeted against the protein, but it can also bind to other locations of the uh, PVDF membrane. So, in order to prevent that, we want to block the surrounding regions of this uh, PVDF membrane with, with other target proteins. And let us say in this case, the protein that we use is simply non-fat milk powder is used in order to do that, okay, non-fat milk powder. Apart from that, 5 percent BSA can also be used, but milk powder is widely available and it is also uh, cheaper, cheaper alternative. So, use the milk powder, non-fat milk powder to coat it. So, this step is known as blocking, okay. So, once blocking is done, so now we can ensure that uh, there are these three places where our target proteins may be present and the surrounding paper, surrounding PVDF membrane is filled with our uh, target protein, either BSA or the uh, milk. Okay? So, now after this step is done, we will do a wash. Okay? Wash after every single blo block and everything, we need to do a washing with buffer. After that, we add the primary, primary antibody. Now, generally two antibodies are used for this process, a primary antibody which will specifically bind to the target region of the protein. For example, our target protein is present somewhere here in this one, in the second or middle one. Okay? So, antibody will bind specifically there and then after the antibody binds, not ex exactly like this, but uh, for simplicity I will draw like this. Then we add the secondary antibody, uh, then we obviously do after primary antibody, we do a wash and then we go for secondary secondary antibody and secondary antibody so this is the primary antibody let me uh, draw this for you this is the primary antibody binding with the target protein this is the target protein this is primary antibody and a secondary antibody will be used the secondary antibody will bind to this is secondary antibody or two degree antibody this is primary or first degree antibody the secondary antibody is linked with an enzyme that can convert a colorless substrate, a colorless substrate into a colored, colored product and we can easily see the presence of the color, the intensity of the color that will give us not only the qualitative analysis idea, but also give us the quantitative idea about the amount of protein present in the actual cell lysate to begin with. Okay? This is the idea. 
So that's why we use two different antibodies. Now, two different antibody utilization is also good in order for a specificity because let's assume that the primary antibody, if we directly give primary antibody and primary antibody is linked with enzyme or it's linked with some uh, component, some enzyme or some protein which will convert a substrate into product which is color or that can give us light. Generally, if you use horse redis peroxidase HRP, in that case it converts uh, the substrate into light. So, we will see a light intensity increase. So, either we can use this primary antibody which will be uh, fixed with an enzyme that can give us uh, the response in uh, terms of light or color or we can use two antibody. The primary antibody will specifically bind to the target protein only and the secondary antibody is anti-primary antibody that will bind to the primary antibody and uh, can give us the signal. So, use secondary antibody and primary antibody combination is good because two antibody will not the chances of two antibodies binding to the non-specific region is far less compared to the utilizing of single antibody. That is why two antibody process is much better and much reliable technique. So, that is what we do after secondary antibody process is done we add substrate. So, eighth step here if you like. So, then obviously goes with washing then again uh, we add substrate and then 10 we go for the reading. Okay. So, reading can be generated utilizing this colorimetric analysis or chemiluminescent analysis. There are different analysis uh, process are there where we can de detect the presence of either light or color and not only just the presence, but the intensity okay, with which they are producing it. So, this is on a whole the steps of western blotting and uh, western blotting technique as I said is used to detect the presence of target protein from a mixture of lysate, a uh, protein mixture of from the lysate and it is very capable, very good technique to detect the presence of a protein qualitatively as well as to detect the amount of protein that is present quantitatively even in the nanogram level. Now, there are some drawbacks as well. For example, if the protein is not properly separated from the mixture of other proteins utilizing SDS page, then there is a big problem because we know that the proteins, some proteins may have same molecular weight or similar molecular weight which will not be resolved properly with the help of uh, polyacrylamide gel. So, in those cases we might have some issues. The other problem associated with western blotting is that this PVDF membrane which is very much uh, which has high affinity towards protein. So, if the blocking step is not done properly then the unwanted binding of antibody will be more as a result of which we will get lots of we will we'll get the signal but along with that there will be a lot of background noise. So, it will be very difficult for us to differentiate the real signal from the background noise. Now, what is the difference between southern and western blotting? In the southern blotting we are detecting DNA, in western blotting we are detecting proteins. In southern blotting we use nylon membrane as a blot, but in case of western blotting we use PVDF membrane as a blot. In case of southern blotting the process rely on the blotting step rely on capillary effect, when in case of western blotting the process of transfer or blotting relies on electric mobility or uh, electric field based on the electric field. Okay. These are the three vital differences between southern blotting and western blotting. Okay. And the final thing is that in western blotting we use antibody as a probe, in southern blotting we use single stranded DNA as a probe. And in western, in southern blotting the single stranded DNA is tagged that is acted as a probe, it is tagged with radioactive phosphorus or uh, it can be tagged with other uh, fluorescent dye where in this case the antibody is tagged with an enzyme that will convert a substrate into colored product. right? So, mostly in uh, northern uh, in southern blotting earlier we use autoradiography to detect the presence of probe and to find out the location of the DNA in the gel while in case of western blotting we use widely use the chemical process or enzyme react or enzymatic reactions uh, to find out. So, utilize chemiluminescence or utilize this to detect the presence of uh, or colorimetry to detect the presence of the protein in the lysate. So, these are the primary differences between southern blotting and western blotting. I believe you got the idea about the western blotting. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more and more videos regarding life science subjects and also comment on this video uh, regarding the topic that you want to, uh, you want us to make video on. Thank you. Bye.